Bone Necklace was a top advisor of the Oglala Lakota tribe, snapped in 1899. He's known for his leadership, holding it down for his tribe during times of big changes and challenges. That snap of Bone Necklace, taken by Hain Photo, is a handmade colored platinum print, really highlighting the threads and trinkets rocking the traditional Oglala Lakota style back in the day. Wolf Robe, also known as Honeheva Tumahi, was born between 1838 and 1841 and passed away in 1910, Oklahoma bound. He was a big shot chief of the Southern Cheyenne tribe, bagging the Benjamin Harrison Peace Medal in 1890 for his moves with the Cherokee Commission. Come the late 1870s, Wolf Robe and his crew got shuffled from the wide open plains to the Cheyenne and Arapaho Indian Reservation in Indian Territory. Eagle Arrow was running with the Siksika tribe, also known as the Blackfoot, chilling in Montana in the early 1900s. During that time, the Siksika were keeping it old school while dealing with the Euro contact wave. Eagle Arrow, like many of his tribe, could have been holding it down, keeping the traditions alive while peeping the changes in the community. Chief Little Wound, a recognized leader of the Oglala Lakota tribe, got caught in 1899 chilling with his fam. That snap captures a slice of history, giving us a peek into the life and culture of the Oglala Lakota in the late 1800s. That photo's like a time capsule, showing off the traditional threads and cultural gear of the era. Dated 1906, a snap caught strong left hand, a member of the Northern Cheyenne tribe, kicking back with his family. It went down in the Northern Cheyenne Reservation, snapped by Julia Tuell. It's likely showing some everyday scene or maybe a special moment for the fam, giving us a look into res life in the early 1900s. The snap titled Minnehaha dropped in 1904 from the Detroit Photographic Company as part of their Photochrome print collection. This colored printing style was a game changer back then. It's part of the Photochrome print collection, cataloged as number 54124. Amos Two Bulls Snap, a Lakota Sioux, got caught by the lens of the big shot New York photographer Gertrude Casebeer around 1898. It was part of Casebeer's personal project, sparked after catching Buffalo Bill's Wild West show rolling into Madison Square Garden. In 1905, down in Taos, New Mexico, a traditional healer's caught on camera tending to a patient. The snap, captured by Carl Moon, aims to document a real moment in Native American medicine, giving us a peek into the traditions and daily life of that community. Charles American Horse, born in 1901, was the son of the big-time Chief American Horse and a member of the Oglala Lakota tribe. His pop's legacy gave him some serious cred in the community, since Chief American Horse was known for his wisdom and negotiation skills. Charles grew up in a time when Native American folks were navigating some big changes. Acoma Pueblo, about 60 miles west of Albuquerque, New Mexico, was holding it down as one of the oldest continuously inhabited communities in the region since around 1100 AD. These folks were keeping their culture strong, with traditions that still hold up today. The snap shows a Crow tribe member, caught by photographer Richard Throssell in the early 1900s. Throssell was all about capturing life on the Crow Reservation in Montana, snapping scenes like camp life, teepees, landscapes along the Little Bighorn River, burial scaffolds, and traditional dances. The Thunder Teepee, a big-time ceremonial tent, belonged to Traz Down the Sun, a respected member of the Blackfoot tribe. This spot, out on the vast North American plains in the early 1900s, was a hub for all things social, spiritual, and survival for the tribe. Tents like the Thunder Tipi were decked out with symbols and designs telling the tribe's stories and beliefs. The piece is a handmade artistic print illustrating a group of five Native Americans on horseback, cruising down a hill in Montana. This scene was captured in the early 1900s, and it's a snap by Roland W. Reed. You can feel the movement and see the vastness of the mountainous landscape in the picture. In 1912, a crew of Pegan men got snapped up while doing sacred rituals honoring the Thunderbird, a big deal in their mythology. Goes down by a river in Montana, probably a spiritually loaded spot for the Pegan. The snap, taken by photographer Roland W. Reed, is a visual testament to their religious practices and the deep connection these native folks have with nature and their ancestral beliefs. Arrowmaker, a dude from the Ojibwa nation got caught on camera in 1903. It's a photochrome print made by the Detroit Photographic Company, one of the pioneers in producing colored postcards and photo reproductions 
showing the life and culture of Native American peoples in the early 1900s. It's a snap of a guy from the Northern Plains, chilling at a high spot, getting a wide view of the landscape in Montana, all colored up by hand, a common move back then to add some life to black and white pics, all done by photographer Roland W. Reed. The photo titled Song Like shows a Pueblo dude in 1899, taken by photographer F.A. Reinhardt, who, along with Adolf F. Muir, snapped up a bunch of Native Americans during the Trans-Mississippi Exposition in Omaha, Nebraska. That expo was a big deal, had lots of Native American delegates showing up, and the pics that came out of it are considered some of the best photographic representations of Native leaders from that time. This snap shows Geronimo, also known as Goya Ale, a big shot leader of the Chiricahua Apache tribe. The pic was snapped in 1898 by F.A. Reinhardt, a notable photographer of the time, during the Trans-Mississippi and International Exposition held in Omaha, Nebraska. It was a big deal because it was one of the rare times Geronimo got caught on camera. Back in the early 1900s, a Blackfeet tribe camp was set up in Montana, a region known for its vast plains and natural landscapes. The camp had a bunch of tents made from animal skins, propped up with wooden stakes, reflecting the traditional digs of the plains people. Among these shelters, tribe horses roamed free, chomping down on the grass in the open plains. This image shows a handmade artistic print with a young person chilling by the riverbank. It's from the early 1900s, credited to photographer Roland W. Reed. It captures the calm and contemplative vibe of the natural scene, reflecting the style and printing techniques of the time. The photo titled, In the Summer, snapped by photographer F. A. Reinhardt in 1898, shows a Kiowa tribe member. It's part of a historical record documenting Kiowa culture and people during that time. The pic gives us a peek into the clothing, adornments, and maybe even the environment where the Kiowa person was snapped, reflecting a specific moment in the tribe's history. A young Blackfeet tribe member, hailing from Montana, experienced the early 1900s. During this time, the tribe was dealing with significant changes to their traditional way of life, adapting to the growing presence of outside influences and the advancing American frontier. Back in the early 1900s, a crew from the Blackfeet tribe called Montana Home they're part of the Blackfoot Confederacy, made up of four Native American Algonquian-speaking groups. The Blackfeet in Montana are known as Pegan Blackfeet. Historically, they settled in Montana in the 17th century after getting pushed out of their original lands north and west of the Great Lakes due to pressure from British traders. In the early 1900s, the Blackfeet tribe lived on the vast open prairies of Montana. During the winter, these lands were often covered in a blanket of snow reflecting the sunlight and creating a scene of serene beauty. Life during this time was all about adapting to the weather conditions and keeping up with the tribe's cultural traditions. A Blackfoot couple lived in the regions of Montana in the early 1900s, an area known for its extensive plains and harsh weather conditions. They shared a life rooted in traditions and deep knowledge of the natural environment, essential for the community's survival and well-being. Their daily life involved activities like hunting, fishing and gathering plants, along with taking part in rituals and cultural practices that strengthened social bonds and tribal identity.